out for negotiations. Prosperity <laughs> needs to be restored. We have to kill this dragon now. I know, I know it's a dangerous mission. You're going to tell us. But you are all brave men. Valiant men. Valiant men. With no fear of injury. I mean, for recall, actually. All maimings, savagings, and flesh wounds are covered by that generous healthcare package when you negotiate breaking hair off. Yeah, but what about burning? Yeah. What about them? Well, surely we're more likely to get burned by a dragon. Exactly. Yeah. Dragons don't actually burn you. They more really? lightly singe. Lightly yeah. oh, oh, no. 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 As this retinue's trade union representative, I must insist that we uh... look. Look. What if I add burn damage into the package? Well, that's, that's more like it. Um, once I've submitted it for ratification of the general vote at this bi-monthly general meeting, as stipulated by subsection 42.6 of the Hero Code, then we'll be happy to... For only sake, I'll do it my bloody self! Cowards, a lot of you! Are any of you here not union? Norland Wiglaf, my good, good man. I knew I could rely on the private sector. No, security really has been much improved since Frothgar actually relied on G4S to get rid of Grendel. Let's go kill ourselves a dragon! Oh! 
knowledge. <laughs> Get the lad pumping through the lungs again. What on earth has happened here? Yeah. Seems like the Welsh have arrived. <laughs> or rather, gone. What a mess. Oh, no, no, do you know what? I'm, I'm, I can't fix it for another Welsh session, you know. You, you can have them. They're yours. All yours. <laughs> I'm building the biggest, biggest dike in the British Isles. A dike? Always in a wall, right? Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. Just a dike? Well, it's a damn big dike, you know. Yes, but why? Well, you see, I've got some problem neighbours. You know, it just give me some respite from the day-to-day -day hectic rush of reading and ruling. A bit of peace and quiet. Well, that's all very well for you, but how are we going to make a programme about a dike interesting? What's wrong with dikes? They're just so dull. I mean, we consider jazzing it up somehow. I mean, uh, a water feature, maybe. What? You need the virtual <laughs> water source to bring them closer to the dike. Give me a break. Besides, that's what the River Seven's for, surely. Oh, OK, so, so not a water feature, but some greenery, perhaps. Uh, I think shrubberies are in vogue as well. That's all I ever hear about around here. Anyway, I'm more into minimalist functionalism in my monuments. <laughs> <laughs> Clear off, you 
you are. That's better. Nothing but trouble then. Although I guess they do give the mercy and trouble some business. Yes, this is all very well, but how are you going to make an interesting program about what's essentially just a pile of earth? I mean, have you considered crazy paving? Perhaps you can deck it. <laughs> deck it? What are we decking for? Or some kind of patio area in which you can enjoy the full extent of your power. Look, mate, this is my dike, okay? I don't need you telling me how to build it. If I want a patio, I'll build it myself. In fact, see that? That's Wales. That's my bloody patio. <laughs> okay? Hey, okay? I don't have time to sit around sunning myself and mind the bloody sheep. I've got a hedge meter to run. I just like dikes! <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I just think you're missing a great opportunity here. Instead of this eyesore... Eyesore? Eyesore? I'll give you an eyesore guards! Blind him! <laughs> well, you certainly won't. <laughs> Some scenes and persons have been dramatised, but the following short film is based on true accounts. Obey to your guidance is recommended, as some scenes may upset young novices. <laughs> I 
ideas and new cultures. Neil <laughs> <laughs> Frenchman, the prolific homilist, described as the Woody Allen of Eansham. <laughs> and these two are new converts from Iceland, whose names I cannot possibly pronounce. <laughs> St. Brendan and his monks haven't arrived yet. They've had some difficulty finding the house. Dear Paul, and B is in the scriptorium. <laughs> And you know what the duty's like on ferries. I mean, my cousin's snoring. Yes, yes, so we were wondering, could we use beer instead? It'd be a really good idea. I mean, you know, we'd get through more of it, and it'll probably bring more people to the service, and help with a conversion. Uh, no. Really? I mean, it's... No, that's no. Oh. <laughs> St. Athelblad's allowed a refilling mead barrel. Get yeah, it. <laughs> Near 31, and the housemates are in the refectory. And blood and fire shall rain down on all the kingdoms in the earth, and blood shall pour through the streets, and you shall descend to the depths of damnation if you do not despise luxury! <laughs> We're monks. We're already quite happy with the austere life. Ah oh, yes, you with your golden manuscripts and wanton interlace. Sure. <laughs> 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 Gil, that's, you're not an Old Testament prophet. Ooh, ooh, did I tell you about something amazing Alfred said about the Old Testament once? Yes! yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, I hate you all. It's <laughs> your own fault, Alfred. We didn't force you to drink all the mead. Oh, you shouldn't have gotten me that drunk. If you force me to drink beyond my might, you must bear the guilt or any harm that comes to me on account of the He's a lightweight. Attention <laughs> housemates, a new member of the community has arrived. Ooh, is it Brendan? No, he's not taking any directions. If a ship arrives, it's because God willed it so. <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome Applewald. All right, lads, how's it going? How's the monastery got in? Yeah, I'm also regular clergy. You know, I'm like an ass that follows the rule of Benedictine. Uh, you know, it's all seen kosher. Well, don't most. Nah, son, nah. You see, you see the old Winster at Winchester? Well, there, there was a lot of secular clerics and immorality. <laughs> Wine, gambling, even an annual black tie dinner. <laughs> you know what I did to him? What? Threw him out from order. Boy, can you help me? Edgar, true gent, that bloke. <laughs> Friends in our places. Best way for a reform movement. Attention housemates, it's time for a new challenge. You've already ended the Pelagian heresy and stopped house fires by praying. This time, you got to convert a horde of Vikings. You're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what crap are you watching on television now? Monastic Big Brother? Are you 
one more theory. Look, you know what? Let's find some music. What have we got? Ah, oh, classic monastic rock. That's what I feel, right? <laughs> <laughs> Gospels, Gospels, all for the love of God, all of the songs. <laughs> I'm just standing in line in the refectory There's no interest in my life in the stand on the street This life hasn't turned out quite the way I wanted it to be you can tell me what you want <laughs> This house of finality today See the rules telling me just where to break I wanna show everyone there's so much more to be So what you need? I need a pagan king who's reached his limit Good, because that's 
not how we roll in Rome. <laughs> right. <laughs> abbots with girlfriends. Lay abbots indeed. <laughs> so there is one person missing. Should be here any minute. Dun, dun, dun! Nobody expects Bishop Malachy! <laughs> surprise is my chief weapon! Surprise and fear! Fear and surprise are my two chief weapons! Fear, surprise, and ruthlessness! That's three! Three chief, uh, three chief weapons! Fear, surprise, ruthlessness, and an almost fanatical devotion to church report! Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll come in again! <laughs> Wait for it. Well, there are some other concerns about the 
content of, of the stories. Uh, it's rather mature. Uh, frankly, sorry, we're not sure that our target readership is, is quite ready for it. What on earth are you saying? Are you saying they want me to edit it? No, no, they love the stories. Can't get enough of the stories. Sorry, it's, it's merely the nature of them. And some of the messages you seem to be sending out with these parodies, these essays, as you call them. You do know what the book is about? <coughs> <laughs> yes, 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 it's a, it's, it's a collection of essays um, discussing the exploitation of the working classes in Norway and the abuses dealt out to them by their kings, an illustration of how their oppressors are propped up by mere fantasy and how to throw off the subduing yoke. Exactly. Yes, but even so, they're worried. I don't care if they're worried! <laughs> don't you see? This is more than about profit. This is about spreading the word to these poor oppressed people that they need to throw off their tyrants who are intentionally keeping them on their knees with a heel at their throats due to the threat of violence and a cult of personality built on fictional bricks and farcical notions of divine ancestors. The only reason they haven't done so already is because they're scared of violence, they're hungry, or they're worried about the elites carrying off their children in the middle of the night. Sorry. No. Calm down. You know I'm on your side. It's just we do things rather differently here to how you do them in Iceland. <laughs> we simply cannot publish such a controversial work at such a delicate political time. Basically, they say, keep the king's tales, ditch the lecture. Is that such a big deal? SUCH A BIG DEAL?! <laughs> you see, if we let these cuts go ahead, the whole point of the book is ruined. The tyrants win, famine and oppression carry on to the next generation. Okay. okay. We'll put a question mark next to that one. <laughs> <laughs> How about your other work? Wool Over the Eyes. Ancient folklore, its manipulation and debilitating effect on the nature of thought. <laughs> what have I suggested? <laughs> Are you watching the Block Review channel? Have you suddenly grown a brain? Surprise, surprise. Can we find something more Christmassy? Yeah, let's see, let's see. Just a minute. Now, what about that? Uh, about that. There we go. Asa was dead. <laughs> there was no doubt whatsoever about that. It was the twentieth year of the reign of Edward, King of Wessex, son of Alfred, father to Athelstan, also known as the Elder. It might have been a good year, it might have been a bad year, but one thing was certain, old Asa was as dead as a doornail. I say it might have been a good or a bad year, because for whatever reason, there just isn't much to be said about Edward's reign. Whether that was a purposeful on the part of the king, a rebellion against his father's reforms, or whether the evidence just doesn't survive, I cannot say. But one story survives from Edward's reign that I will recount to you tonight, which may go a long way to explaining the character of our king. Once upon a time, of all the good days on the year, of Christmas Eve, old Edward had been visited by the ghost of Asa. Now this was not a friendly visit, as Asa had been dead these eleven years. The ghostly bishop had come to warn our king that he was on the verge of near anonymity. The lack of documentary sources, the <laughs> scribes to record his efforts would come back to warn the king. As generations of scholars would struggle to understand where so little exists from his reign. Asa warned Edward that he would be visited by three spirits who would guide the king away from the path of obscurity. <laughs> what? The first spirit approaches. <laughs> Wake up, son. <laughs> Dad? I is that you? Didn't Asa tell you you were going to be visited by three ghosts? But, Dad, <laughs> I thought I had some bad need when he showed up. Haven't I had enough of Asa preaching when he was alive? Oh, he just came along just telling me how no I was such a boring king and how no one was writing anything about my reign. How he'd pay my scribes more if they were going to write about my achievements in the Chronicle. 
I mean, he'd really hit below the belt when he said that no one was writing my biography yet. Oh, shut up, son. I haven't got time for this, Mitz and Dunga. I need to take Christmas class. That will help to demonstrate to you why you're such a bo- uh, I, I mean, why you're having a spot of bother as king. It will help you to reform. Then you a great king. Really, really regret getting you that for Father's oh, Day. <laughs> no, no, not the court school. No, <laughs> Dad, I know you translated being be Gregory the Great in here. Please, ghost, make it stop. It's alright. It's alright, darling. That's the past. Oh. I'm the grocer of Christmas present, and I'm here to show you why you're being such a point. I mean, less effective king. See those scribes over there? They're cold and miserable. And they've just learned how to write in phase two square minus, phase one square minuscule. Don't you think that they deserve some twigs on their fire at least? Isn't that hard enough? Athelflaed, what would you know about running a kingdom? Surely Athelred was the brains of that Mercian outfit anyway? Bitch, please. <laughs> <laughs> the wrong corn, Warwick, and that little hamlet they call York. But then you died? True, but... Do you remember who the people of York came to first when they needed protection? Okay, m moving, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> Are you going to show me something? Oh yeah. I'm here to tell you to stop being such a whiny bitch, bro. <laughs> yeah, working on that phase two square minuscule. <laughs> do you know what you should do? You should be creating manuscripts and charters. Maybe then one day you'll be remembered as something more than my brother and Alfred the Great's son. And maybe you'll be more popular than the vegetarian option in Valhalla. Just saying. <laughs> Hi, Dad. What? Athelstan? Aren't you like 12? <laughs> now. Thanks for noticing. Are you the ghost of Christmas yet to come? Uh, pretty much. So, what are you here to show me? The shadows of things that will be, or the shadows of things that may be. Father to Athelstan, or 
also known as the Elder. It might have been a good year, it might have been a bad year, but one thing was certain, old Asa was as dead as a doornail. <laughs> I say it might have been a good or a bad year, because for whatever reason, there just isn't much to be said about Edward's reign. Whether that was a purposeful on the part of the king, a rebellion against his father's reforms, or whether the evidence just doesn't survive, I cannot say. But one story survives from Edward's reign that I will recount to you tonight, which may go a long way to explaining the character of our king. Once upon a time, of all the good days on the year, of Christmas Eve, old Edward had been visited by the ghost of Asa. Now this was not a friendly visit, as Asa had been dead these eleven years. The ghostly bishop had come to warn our king that he was on the verge of near anonymity. The lack of documentary sources, and <laughs> scribes to record his efforts would come back to warn the king, as the generations of scholars would struggle to understand where so little exists from his reign. Asa warned Edward that he would be visited by three spirits who would guide the king away from the path of obscurity. But the first spirit approaches. <laughs> Wake up, son. Dad? Is that you? Didn't Asa tell you you were going to be visited by three ghosts? But, Dad, we thought I had some bad mead when he showed up. Haven't I had enough of Asa preaching when he was alive? Oh, he just came along and was just telling me how no, I was such a boring king and how no one was writing anything about my reign. How he'd pay my scribes more if they were going to write about my achievements in the Chronicle. I mean, he really hit below the belt when he said that no one was writing my biography yet. Oh, shut up, son. I haven't got time for this mix and dunga. I need to say something to us. That will help to demonstrate to you why you're such a boring... Uh, I, I mean, why are you having a spot of bother as king? It will help you to reform. Then you a great king. Thank you. <laughs> I really, really regret getting you that for Father's oh, Day. <laughs> no! No! Not the court school! No! <laughs> Dad, I know you translated Big B and Gregory the Great in here. Please, ghost, make it stop! <laughs> you know about running a kingdom? Surely Athelred was the brains of that Mercian outfit anyway? Bitch, please. <laughs> <laughs> the wrong call, Warwick, and that little hamlet they call York. But then you died? True, but do you remember who the people of York came to first when they needed protection? Okay, m moving, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> Are you going to show me something? Oh yeah. I'm here to tell you to stop being such a whiny bitch, bro. Get working on that phase two square minuscule. Do you know what you should do? You should be creating manuscripts and charters. Maybe then one day you'll be remembered as something more than my brother and Alfred the Great's son. And maybe you'll be more popular than the vegetarian option in Valhalla. Just saying. <laughs> Hi, Dad. What? Athelstan? Aren't you like... Well, <laughs> thanks for noticing. Are you the ghost of Christmas yet to come? Uh, pretty much. So what are you here to show me? The shadows of things that will be, or the shadows of things that may be. <laughs> look at that, look at that, look at that. You can't write that. Fine. You know, he did lose his battle. He's like trousers in the middle of battle. I know he's I know he doesn't pay enough, and I know we only get to Ryan phase one, and I know he's definitely a bit of a tool, but we can't put that crap in the chronicle. Maybe if we just make his reign the most boring in the history of the chronicle. Sound good? Hell yeah. <laughs> what is going on? Who is this man that those two scribes were talking about with such disdain? So, let's talk about your essay for this week. To what extent is it necessary to see the reign of Edward as sandwiched between two of the greatest Anglo-Saxon kings of this period, Alfred and Athelstan? <laughs> or is it possible to distinguish between his achievements? 
achievements and those of his father and son. I just, I understand what's going on in Alfred and Athelstan's reigns are much better than Edward's. And like, what achievements? We don't even know that the Bible Hydra was written in his reign. No more! No more! <laughs> I will not be the man I was. I will not be the man who led to this intercourse. No more. I guess my work here is done. Tomorrow. Tomorrow will be different. You'll all see. Tomorrow will be different. Well, I'd like to say that the spirits of Christmas, past, present and future, were successful in changing Edward's attitude towards his legacy as much as they were for old Scrooge. From whom we nicked this town. <laughs> but, alas, our petulant king remains shadowed in obscurity. The moral of our story, as most supervisors have probably already told you, never put off until tomorrow what you could do today, and always make sure you pay your scribes well. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>